In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about the discriminant. Recall that for a quadratic of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, uh, when you set that equal to zero, we found out that the quadratic has roots at negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, the whole expression divided by 2a. This was the quadratic equation, if you recall. Now, inside of the quadratic equation, there's a very special characteristic, and that is located underneath the square root sign. If you notice here, we have b squared minus 4ac. This, this um, expression here is known as your discriminant. This is my discriminant here. So your, your discriminant is defined to be b squared minus 4ac. Now, what does it give us? So if I set my discriminant, which is typically labeled with a d to b squared minus 4ac, we have the following um, rules. Here's rule number one. If my discriminant, i.e. b squared minus 4ac, is greater than zero, I'm going to have exactly two roots. If my discriminant, i.e. b squared minus 4ac, if that's equal to zero, I'm going to have exactly one root. And lastly, if my discriminant is less than zero, I'm going to have no real roots. So what we have here is three possibilities. If your discriminant is greater than zero, i.e. what's underneath the root is positive number, you've got yourself two real distinct roots. If what's underneath my quadratic equation is equal to zero, you're only going to generate one root, so the quadratic will touch the x-axis once. And lastly, if my discriminant is less than zero, you have no real roots. The reason why that is the case for example, three here, is because you're taking the square root of a negative number. And we'll go, as we go through the examples, we'll further illustrate why these three options exist. Okay? So the idea here is that with this uh, concept of a discriminant, without actually finding the roots themselves of your quadratic equation, you can tell the types of roots you have. All right, so let's look at an, our first example. So for each question, determine the number of roots. So let's look at our first quadratic here. So this quadratic is in standard form, all right? So I need to know uh, my A value is going to be 4, my B value is going to be negative 12, and my C value is going to be 9. Now, I don't want to actually find the roots themselves. I just want to know what types of roots do I have. Do I have two roots? Do I have one root? Or do I have no real roots? So we sub this into our discriminant. So my discriminant here is going to be negative 12, quantity squared, minus 4, A, C, well, negative 12 quantity squared is 144. This will be equal to 144 as well, and we end up getting zero. In this situation, I can conclude that because my discriminant is zero, I have exactly a one root. Okay. Let's look at the next example here. For the next example, uh, my A value here is 2, my B value is 5, and my C value is negative 1. So I plug this into my discriminant, so b squared minus 4ac, we're going to get 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 1 is going to be 25 plus 8 is 33. So now my discriminant is greater than 0. And because my discriminant here is greater than 0, I know I have two distinct roots. So this is gonna, you're going to get two different roots. So this quadratic here... This one right here is going to cross the x-axis at two different locations. All right, let's look at example three. So same idea here. You have to be in standard form, so you can identify your a, b, and c values. So b, a is 1, b is negative 2, and c is 3. So if I go ahead and calculate my discriminant here, we got our b squared minus 4ac, so negative 2 quantity squared. Don't forget to put brackets around that minus sign, else you'll have an error. And this will become 4 minus 12. Here we get negative 8. So now you'll notice uh, with this question, we've got my discriminant is less than 0. So when my discriminant is less than 0, that means what's underneath the square root sign is negative. You can't take the square root of a negative number. So therefore, the type of roots we have here are no real roots. 
So this will not cross, your quadratic does not cross the x-axis on your real number system. Right? It has no real roots. Let's take a look at example 4 here. I want to look at example 4 because of the fractions. Now, because we're setting this equal to 0, if I want to go calculate my discriminant here, I would have to take the b squared would be minus a half, and your c value would be 2 over 7, and I would have to work with fractions. I don't want to work with fractions, so what I want to do here is because it's set equal to 0, I can multiply across by 14 and get rid of these fractions. So if I multiply across by 14, I get 14 times x squared minus 14 times 1 half x plus 14 times 2 over 7 equals 14 times 0, 14x squared. These will reduce to become 7. This will reduce to become 2. And you end up getting minus 7x plus 4 is 0. So now we have a quadratic. These are not the same quadratic. This quadratic and this quadratic will look different. However, both of these quadratics have the exact same roots. So if I go ahead and calculate my discriminant here, I'm going to get b squared, which is negative 7, minus 4ac. So if you calculate this, you get negative 175. So th therefore, this quadratic here is less than 0. Therefore, we have no real roots. Okay, let's look at this next example here. So for this question here, they want you to find the value of k. Find the value of k such that the quadratic has exactly one root. So they're switching this on you. If you notice here in all the previous examples, we actually had the, the values of a, b, and c. This time, I, know, I don't know the exact numeric value of a. I know that a is equal to 2k minus 3. I do know the value of b is negative 7. I do know the value of c is 1, right? But what we want to do is, okay, if a is 2k minus 3, and b is negative 7, and c is 1, I want to find the value of k. So I have to find this value of k that will force the quadratic to have exactly one root. Okay, well, to have exactly one root, that means my discriminant must be 0. Right? It must be the case my discriminant is 0. Okay, well, what's the discriminant? The discriminant here is going to be b squared, so negative 7 squared, minus 4. a is this 2k minus 3 times c. So my discriminant here is going to be 49 minus 4 times 2k minus 3. Okay, so what are they telling me in this question? They're saying, okay, well, if you want to have exactly one root, my discriminant must be 0. That means that 49 minus 4 times 2k minus 3 must equal 0. So now I just have to solve for this here. So we get 49 minus 8k plus 12 is 0. And here we get 61 minus 8k is 0 negative 8k is negative 61, and therefore k equals 61 over 8. So therefore, if k is 61 over 8, we have exactly one root. Okay, that concludes our lesson on the discriminant here. So you'll notice again, just to summarize, the discriminant is a way to calculate the type of roots you have without actually going through the entire quadratic equation. So I can quickly calculate my discriminant. I can figure out whether this, the discriminant is greater than 0, equal to 0, or less than 0. And depending on that, I can determine whether I have two roots, exactly one root, or no real roots. Thank you.